Bud, Not Buddy by Christopher Paul Curtis. Chapter 17. I held the mop so that it was floating on top of the water in the bucket. I was pretending it was that underwater boat in that book Mama read to me, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Captain Nemo, I whispered, pretending I was a sailor. I matey. The squabs were only able to plug 10,000 of the leaks we have. That means we have 10,000 left, and dadgummit, I think we're going down with all hands on board. I looked up to make sure no one was watching me too close. The dusky devastators of the Depression were still putting their instruments on the stage, waiting for Miss Thomas and Mr. Jimmy and Hermione e. Calloway. I whispered, Heavenly Father, all is lost. Then I made the mop sink into the water, drowning Captain Nemo, Matey, and all the poor squabs. They went down with a bunch of bubbles and soap suds and dirt. I know Hermione e. Calloway was trying to work me like a dog, but he was doing a real bad job at it. I'd already wiped all the tables and chairs down in the log cabin, and now I was going back to clear mop the floor for the second time. It was a piece of cake. The bucket even had a thing on top of it that you could use to wring the mop out, and Hermione e. Calloway didn't even know how much fun I was having. Making somebody work hard isn't as easy as it looks. Some folks are good at it, and some folks aren't. Some folks can look at you and tell if you're even thinking about slacking off. They'll add some work to you faster than you can say Jack Robinson. Some folks will find an excuse to strap you even if you're working as hard as you ever did in your life. I stuck the mop head into the ringer. I pretended it was somebody at a washing machine not paying attention to what he was doing and getting his whole body pulled through and runged it out. I let the handle up to see what was left of this poor soul, but before I could check, someone yelled out, One, two, one, two, three. I looked up. The thug was brushing his sticks across the round, gold metal thing next to his drums and making it sound like a soft rain was commencing to fall on someone's tin roof. Only instead of sounding like rain splashing any time it wanted to, the thug had it sounding like it was coming down in a steady, bouncing way. Then Dirty Deed started making the piano sound like it was a kind of drum. For a second, it felt right in with the rain pats that the thug was making. Then it took off and made you think of what Niagara Falls must sound like. It sounded like big, bright drops of water splashing up and over, over and up. The drops would fall loud and clear as anything, but before you knew it, they were bounce they were right back in the thug's steady, bouncing beat. Steady Eddie started snapping his fingers real soft. In time with the piano and the drum, his toothpick jumping right along with his fingers. He put his axe in his mouth and blew, but instead of the horn making music, it seemed like Steady made it talk. He blew one long, low, rumbling sound, and I knew right then, with that one deep, sad moan, what the most beautiful sound in the world was. Steady held the note for a long time, then made the sax drift away from the rest of the storm of music. It swirled and floated back and joined the rain sound that the thug and Dirty Deed kept going. I just stood there. I didn't even hear Miss Thomas and Mr. Jimmy and Hermione e. Calloway come up from behind me. Miss Thomas rubbed her hand across my head and said, Bud, you've done a great job. The place is sparkling. I was going to say, thank you, ma'am, but it seemed like talking was wrong with what all these wonderful sounds were coming from the people on the stage. Mr. Jimmy said, Le Bon looking good, son. Hermione e. Calloway grunted, and the three of them walked up on the stage. Mr. Jimmy picked up his horn and joined in the storm. Miss Thomas sat on a stool, closed her eyes, and ducked her head up and down, up and down. Hermione e. Calloway stood next to his giant fiddle and started bobbing his head, too. He put one of his hands near the top of the fiddle and began pulling at the strings with the other hand. Every time he patted the strings, it seemed like something wide and heavy was walking by slow and easy, or it seemed like he was the thunder, soft and far away, but getting closer all the time. All of the instruments blended up together, and just like that smell in the library, you couldn't tell which one was your favorite. First, you'd say it was Mr. Jimmy on the trumpet. Then Doo, Doo Bug's trombone would make you think it was the best. Then Dirty Deed would make the piano sound like water hitting big rocks, and you'd know there wasn't anything that sounded that good until Steady Eddie would make the saxophone sing and talk and dance around everyone else, and you'd swear that that was the only sound you'd ever want to hear again. All the while, Hermione e. Calloway and the thug kept everything moving by making the drums and the giant fiddle pound out a soft, steady beat, like someone's heartbeat turned way up loud. You'd have a real hard time trying to figure out which instrument was your favorite until Miss Thomas opened her mouth. While the rest of the band was being a storm, she was the sun busting through thick gray clouds. With the first thing she sang, you had to wonder why this band was called Hermony e. Calloway and the Dusky Devastators of the Depression, or Hermony e. Calloway and the nu Nubian Knights. It should be called Miss Thomas and the Dusky Devastators of the Depression and a mean old guy on the giant fiddle. 
She was so good, she didn't have to sing real words. Mostly, she was saying things like la da da di da da da, ha we a ho ha we a ho ha we a day. Then Steady Eddie would answer on the saxophone, and before you knew it, the two of them were having a regular conversation. Every once in a while, Mr. Jimmy's trumpet would come in and put his two cents worth in. Then it would fade away. All the other instruments took turns trying to interrupt the conversation, but in the end, it was Miss Thomas's voice and steady saxophone doing the talking that you really wanted to listen to. Finally, Miss Thomas did a bunch more do de do de do de bas and steady answered. Then, just when you thought you could understand this language they were talking, Miss Thomas broke out in American. She sang. We haven't met since then, gee, but it's nice to see you again she said. Nice to see you, to see you again. And the storm was over. The last thing you could hear was the rain from the thug and the thunder from Hermione e. Calloway getting further and further away like the storm had gone and blowed itself over into the next county. Then it was dead quiet. I let the mop fall over and clapped as loud as I could and said, wow. Miss Thomas stood up and did one of those curtsy bows. I clapped louder. I could see now why this band got to have six exclamation points behind their name. <laughs>